Green Party here in Sweden, they came up with this brilliant thing. They want water to be more expensive. And I have good news about puppet globalist politicians not doing very well. Stefan, go det bra? Ja, det, det går bra. Tack, <laughs> tack så mycket. Ja, varsågod. Yeah, yeah, I love your Swedish. It's very good. Ah, you are very kind. To be honest, I speak more uh, in in my past. I spoke more Norwegian than Swedish, so I probably get the two a bit confused. But you, it, it's a little bit like English and Scottish. We can understand each other. Yeah. And I think it's the same in Scandinavia, right? Yeah, between Norway and Sweden, it's we we understand each other pretty pretty well. Yeah. Yes, and what a absolutely beautiful, stunning part of the world you live in. Yes, I agree. Yeah, wonderful people, although not maybe not all of them awake. Not all of them. Well, there's there's quite a few of them are awake actually in Sweden, but. Uh, not uh, many enough not enough yes of course and we were just talking about alkaline uh, alkalinity or pe- i shouldn't call it alkaline diet because people think you mean being alkaline which is probably going to get you just as sick as being acidic but <laughs> talk we were talking ph levels friends that we're all living organisms have a have a natural ph um balance and uh Yeah, it's not something that's talked about, is it, Stefan? It's not. It's not like a well-known thing. No, uh, I can actually tell you a story about this. Uh, no, I got a uh, bad stomach ache back in two thousand and eight, and I then I started to study this stuff, and I don't know uh, anything like you do, but I I did understand this thing about acidity. And that you have to do something about it. So I started eating uh, broccoli and spinach, just like you told me now. Yeah, and I was doing, you know, I put spinach in a in a pot with water, and I boiled it, and I drank the water. I was doing this stuff, and uh, it cured me totally. And I haven't been, I haven't had any problems since then. Mm. So it uh, it's abs- absolutely to what you are saying of course i mean you should know yes when i'm kind of life coaching people i i kind of start with trying to get individuals to understand that everything we've been taught i mean like everything not like some bits or everything is a lie it's it's all every the the whole matrix <laughs> as I call it, it's founded on a, it's just founded on lies. You know, our education's a lie. Our, our food industry's a lie. Our medical industry's a lie. Um, financial, our, you know, the banking system's <laughs> a lie. Um, you know, the, 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 the media is, is by definition, it's a, I don't know if it's necessarily a lie or just just a version of the of, of the truth, and it's not a version of the truth that suits people like you and I. Would would you agree? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, this is how it is. Yes, and it's a fascinating journey when you start to realize that okay, so this was a lie, and then you then you look further and you find. All right, this was a lie too, and yeah, and it goes back. It uh, and it becomes very basic. I mean, the lies are some of the lies that you see that I found are so basic, like um, uh, how what work should look like, uh, what a life should be like. Uh, you know, these very basic things are programmed in a way that people think, okay, so this is how it should be, right? And uh, it was based on a lie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I agree. Yes, massively. And um, 
probably like yourself on your YouTube channel, Stefan, Sanity for Sweden, Friends at Home. Um, you probably understand we can't say too much about the last couple of years, but when you understand it all, you have a completely different take on it all. And when you see what they've been doing to the children in schools, it's, it's nothing. Sh it's, well, I mean, it is criminal that I think a lot of people have worked that one out. But to see teachers in education that, that, you know, they're putting this hand sanitizer on the children four times a day, uh, it, it, it's just so stupid. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I can't, I can't, you know, it goes against every, it just, it goes against everything we would, you know, we would had drummed into us as as kids is like get dirty you know eat a bit of dirt it's good you know mix with people that are ill it's that's you know this is what your body needs to thrive and uh, and 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 survive and when you see now it, it's like everyone thinks if if you kill every single bacteria on the planet then that's a good <laughs> it, it's 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 uh yeah i talked to my father about this you know my father was brought up as a farmer's son together with uh, 11 siblings right? and he was uh, working with the cows and the horses and pigs and and uh, and he just bought this whole thing Oh, by the way, I'm not posting this video on YouTube. I don't know if you are. So I've, I feel okay to just say what I want. Uh, I will be posting it on Rumble. So, yeah. Yeah, I, what, whatever. I'll, I'll, uh, we normally post to YouTube. We, I, I think I'm one of the very few truth channels that's left. Oh, yeah? following what's what's been going on like there were some wonderful channels um amazing polly she was great yeah. um uh i mean even D D david ike is you know he was one of the first to go and and it was simply because some of these platforms i'm saying no names they just have they have a set of rules and they're they're quite in that respect they're quite fair because if you don't break them, then you don't lose your platform, right? So we just developed a way of speaking that didn't uh, is kind of abstract, but everybody knows what what like what you're talking about, and that, that's why we <laughs> that's why we're still here. Uh, right. Uh, so I understand. So yeah. I will try to to fit into this. So I was talking to my dad, and he's uh, he totally bought this this whole thing. And we were discussing this, and I was so surprised about this because. And then I asked him about his childhood, right? And I asked him, I mean, what happened? You got sick, right? And you, but you were pretty pretty healthy, weren't you, right? And then you had a pretty good life, didn't you? And I talked about the immune system and, you know, getting dirty and meeting people and, and this all this stuff, and it was like. It was like I saw that he remembered this, you see? But then I saw how he just flicked over to the narrative and thought, no, 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 no. I have to isolate, you know. I'm, I'm telling people to wear the diaper and everything and you know, taking this thing is the best thing I can do. But there was a... There was a moment, a brief moment, where he was actually thinking and remembering this thing about uh, uh, getting involved with other people, and that this could be a good thing. And this, this is how he was raised. You know? So yeah. he had this knowledge already, but he just forgot about it. Uh, I was very uh, surprised, and it was tragic to, to see this. Yeah, the conditioning is um, very strong. My question to you, Stefan, was was that 
was there anything in particular that that got you you know that piqued your interest and got you to start looking at life in a different way yeah yeah there was actually a, a very clear moment when this happened and i was uh, 20 years old actually and i, I was getting involved in uh, health i mean vitamins and minerals in the in that business not not really hard but i was into it at the time and uh, and then there was a uh, something happened here in sweden that was uh, the they they wanted to regulate vitamins and minerals and i totally understood this was destructive and evil and i understood that they are doing it for profit and i also saw how media was dealing with this and it uh, it brought me to real this realization that uh, media will actually say whatever they pay them to say and these guys who are doing it they are not doing it for well they are not really interested in your health they are just interested in your money and they are actually interested in you being sick so uh, I realized this when I was 20 uh, and and this uh, stayed with me so I I don't I don't think I ever trusted media for instance never and I think uh, pe people in general they are uh, sort of gullible but you know I actually did an experiment once I was standing in line to pay groceries and there were, you know, they have these uh, billboards, uh, you know, these uh, papers. They showed the headlines, right, next to the cashier, right. And there were two headlines, <coughs> and um, one of them said something about uh, rich people drinking blood, blah blah, and so on. Well, it was this terrible headline, you know. and there was this guy standing in front of me, and I said. I want to know what he thinks about this. So I asked him, what do you think about this? Oh, I don't believe it, he said. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think people are a bit more aware than maybe we think. Uh, but uh, there, there is a situation. And I think we are, I, my, me personally, I have been realizing over time that people are not like me. You know, we are different. And I, I thought everybody could see what I was seeing, but they, they didn't. So then I was very happy just to find people who actually saw what I was seeing. And that I also found out that they, there are many of them, like you, yourself. So, but uh, it's been sort of uh, sad. This is a sad part of this thing that, you know, realizing that people are not, they aren't really interested in this stuff. You know, they are interested in uh, what, what's going to happen next weekend or, or they're interested in a car or something, you know, while we are interested in what's going on on the planet. So, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed, Stefan, is, is people's long-term remembering of things is, is it's really bad. For example, I can remember what the sky was like when I was a child. You know, I can remember because I walked to school. I remember in the summer you looked up and you had this incredible blue sky, this deep, deep, deep blue not a cloud in the sky and that that was summer right and we had that was you know not every summer was as long as every other summer but you you had five or six weeks of this kind of weather and we had droughts and this you know water shortages this sort of stuff like now it's it's crazy that other adults my age they can't look at the sky and realize how different it is and it's i mean today it's just really bad 
friends at home, if you don't know what we're talking about, you for those that do, like God bless you. <laughs> um, for those that don't, it, it's you know they're messing with the skies, and um, it's so obvious. But I think I said to you earlier, Stefan, you know, if you're not prepared to go out at six in the morning, look at the sky, see where the planes are, you know, look at the, the trails these planes leave across. And then you've got to go out at midday and then you go, ah, right, that trail there was from that. And, and then you go out at six o'clock at night, by which time the trail that was there, it's kind of drifted over here. But now it's. It's enormous. It's, you know, this huge, bizarre shaped cloud. Um, and I think, like you said, who's prepared to do that? Especially if they don't even really have a, like, a care about what, you know, like you said, they're thinking about, like, the football next week or something. Or, um, yeah. uh, well, as I told you, I have not looked into this thing with the skies. And, uh, I suppose it's different where you live, but because we, I don't see any of this here. Now I live in the countryside uh, in Sweden. Not many people live here, actually, where I live, uh, compared to other parts of Sweden. So I don't know, but uh, we don't. I don't see it here. We we don't have this mm -hmm. situation that you are describing. So, and I haven't looked into it at all. Do I have you? friends. I have friends who are into it very much, yeah. talk about it, but you know, I, I'm not that interested in this part. Maybe it's because I don't see the, well, it's not, it's not personal. <laughs> right. How's the immigration in Sweden then? Because that's been a big thing, hasn't it? Is, yeah. Is it true in Malmö that there's, there's no go areas? Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a, the police have a list of no-go areas in Sweden, or they call them uh, troubled areas or something. Yeah. And there's 61 of them. Last time I checked, it was 61 of them. It's a list from the police uh, headquarters. Yeah, 24 of them are serious, really serious. There are some areas of Sweden, uh, especially Stockholm, Malmö, Gothenburg, uh, where the police need escort if they are called in or the, the ambulance is called in, they need escort to make sure that they can actually perform their job. Mm. Yeah. So they don't so, get raped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they get attacked. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of making a joke, but it's also that Sweden is now known as the rape capital of Europe. Yeah. Uh, and anyone that's been in your wonderful country, as I have, you know, on and off for several years, will know the Swedish are the most beautiful, harmless people. The, the crime rate is crazy in Sweden. In Sweden, folks, you go into a shop and it's like it's thousands of pounds worth of merchandise and there's not even like a security camera. <laughs> it's, it's just people don't steal shit. It's... It, it's because the sense of community is, is is so strong, but of course, that's being destroyed now. Yeah, it's um, been destroyed. You know, and uh, it's different now, and uh, especially in the well, at least in the big cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the rape, the rape statistics. Actually, the rape thing was was one of the reasons why I started doing videos because I got so pissed off with this. I, I, there's something with me. I, I feel like a knight, you know, when it comes to ladies. I feel protective. I, I want to help them. I want to you know, protect them. And it, it bugs me when, you know, young women don't feel safe and they are attacked. And it bugs me very, very much. And, and I, was, I saw this rape statistic going up and I was reading the stories I heard about these stories and uh, and it pissed pissed me off so much and I think it was one of the main reasons why I started doing videos because uh, uh, it's uh, terrible stuff. Uh, Sweden used to be very 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 safe. It was like ridiculous, you know. 
a lady could walk through Stockholm, no, no problem, at two o'clock in the morning, and she wouldn't be. That was wasn't there was no problems, you see. So, well, of course there were. Yeah, uh, things happened, of course, but relatively speaking, it was very, very safe. Yeah, I mean, my, uh, you know, my girlfriend was Swedish. She was working in a supermarket in Norway, and the, um, I, th I think there were Sudan Sudanese migrants. Um, they came in with a machine gun. And they just shoved it in her face. She was on the, t you know, the cash register, the till. And they say, give us all the money. And, and, and she's Swedish, so she doesn't understand. You know, she looks at them and says, why? <laughs> she didn't get, like, this is a robbery. Um, <laughs> do you feel like it's part of the agenda to destroy identity in Europe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was too good, you see. I think that's the problem. I think the, the people that we are dealing with here, the top globalist guys, uh, they, just, they, don't just, they don't like it. People enjoying themselves, having a good time, feeling happy, free, you know, safe. It doesn't fit their agenda. So, yeah, it's a, and there's also, I think, a plan to sort of wipe, wipe us out. Yeah, that's, that's what I believe. I've been listening to the politicians here in Sweden now, and it's uh, absolutely ridiculous how they are facing the problem. How the problem is right there in their faces. And they can see it, but still they won't look at it. They just won't look at it. And if they are forced to talk about it, they will shift focus to something else and try to say that, you know, this is not the problem. Here's the problem. You know, we are going to solve this problem. It's not this one. And anyone can see that this is the problem. The problem started with mass immigration, and it will not stop until we deal with that part. Yeah, I mean, look what Canada's been through with that, with that puppet. Was he called Trudeau? Trudeau, yeah. Jeez, I mean, it's not just that country, is it? The whole world is just putting up with this stuff and going along with it, and. Um, on a positive, folks, a lot of people are waking up. And I think um, ultimately truth will prevail, truth and light, because you can't put that back in a box, whereas the lies you, you can expose. You know, once you start to get this and you start to see it, um, you can't not see it, even though, even though like me with uh, my awakening, it, it can – it can take a while. Um, Don't you think, think it's fascinating how people like yourself, you know, and I was listening to this guy, this Scottish guy, Oliver. What's his name? Oliver. You know him? He's talking on GB News. Yeah. Uh, Neil. Oliver. Neil, Neil Oliver. Oliver. Yeah. Maybe. He used, yeah. He used to have a really popular television series here. Yeah. So I was listening to him just now, today. And he was talking, I think he's a brilliant guy. And he, he did his own research and came to his own conclusions. And he came to the same conclusions. That's fascinating. You know, it's not like the, uh, the inf it's not like a program, you know, like uh, when you are educated, indoctrinated by society and the establishment is like a program, right? But these are uh, separate individuals doing their own personal research on what is going on. And they more or less end up with the same answers. Yeah. And that's, I think that's interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. But what I will say there, um, and I'm not going to like comment on any individual, but for the last couple of years, we've had a lot of prominent speakers. And to the people in the alternative community, like the truth community, they, they, they would probably think these individuals are like, they're here, they're, they're the good guys. They're here to set. It, the, the problem is, is that they're also, they're all still supporting the narrative. They're just ch like challenging it in, in a slight way, you know, um, Again, Stefan, I can't say too much because of some of the platforms we video on. Perhaps we'll have to have this chat on our locals platform and we can say what we what we want. Friends, if you can move over to our locals platform, it's free to subscribe. You can pay five pounds if you want to support the channel. And that's really appreciated. But, you know, so we we can speak openly. I, we should probably have done that from the beginning. But. It's like somebody, like a banker, that's woken up and realizes the whole banking system, this fraction, you know, fractional reserve banking, and he he realizes a big scam, a massive lie on the people. It's debt slavery, right? The whole, you know, it's like he realizes that and and he steps out of it, and then in order to help the people. He says, right, what you want to do, you want to buy these bits of paper from me and I'm going to put some numbers on them. And right, this is worth it. Do, do, do you get what I'm saying? He's using exactly the same system that he's trying to tell people. Is ah, I think I know. I understand. Yeah. It, would, it would be helpful if you mentioned the name. Well, But OK, I I'll say I'll, I'll say yeah. a name. Antoine Beauchamp, folks. Ah, I see. I all understand him. him. Right, most important that, and and your body's pH is it's it's everything is on there, right? You know. I see. You, I have an example of this. I think I understand what you're talking about because we have this uh, comedian here in Sweden uh, who is very very popular here in Sweden, and there was a point during this whole thing that happened during the last two and a half years where he started to speak up yeah, and said, no, this is wrong. You know? uh, no, you can't do this. This is wrong, right? And I got very optimistic about this guy, and I thought, wow, this guy is now maybe waking up. Maybe he will now help us, you know, help people understand what is happening. And he was walking on that road to truth, might, you might say, right? And then, then all of a sudden, he just shifted back. He just turned away again and went back to his, his old me. You know what I mean? Mm. And it was pathetic to see this. Uh, so I think I understand what you're talking about. If you If you really want to help, then you have to go the all, all the way. Um, but some people are on the path and they haven't got it yet, uh, but you have to walk all the way if you really want to do something. What, what do we think about the transgender agenda then, Stefan? Is, that, it, is it okay for, like, should men... If you decide to be a woman one day, are you then allowed to enter the women's Olympics? <laughs> the women's events in the Olympics, I should say. Yeah. And no. <laughs> you know, I think actually I've been talking a lot about this on my channel. Uh, you know, I think this is uh, possibly the thing where we can push them back. You know, this is where people are reacting and say, now you've gone too far with this. We don't want to see these big guys competing against the ladies. Oh, this is stupid. So I think, it's a, I think it's an opportunity for us to draw the line and stop them right there and push them back.
from there. Yeah. Because it's uh, it 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 doesn't make any sense. They they are trying to make it logic, right? Oh, this guy he wants to be a lady, and he says that he's a lady, so he should compete against these other ladies. Of course, they are trying to make it sound logical, uh, but it doesn't work. You know, it's so against the nature of what how you feel as a human and it's totally unfair of course no i remember i do i did a story about this basketball player i don't know i can't remember his name now i think it was in minneapolis possibly in the united states and he identified as a lady and he was a, he was a former marine uh oh, six seven tall, right? Big guy, you know, with big arms and everything. He's a, he was a Navajo Indian, I think, originally. This big guy, you know, that you would actually be sort of intimidated by if you met him. Right? And he was playing basketball with the ladies. And there were pictures of this as they were standing beside the court during a timeout and he was like so much taller than the uh, the girls and they were like looking up to him and they were talking and it was it was just stupid yeah it's a shame that we can't uh, encourage people as well to love themselves for you know for what you are and what what you're born as and and not feel that you have to conform to any particular sort of gender stereotype. Um, is this uh, been a big thing in Sweden, Stefan? Have you had these, like these uh, drag drag queens in schools and, and this kind of thing? Uh, funny enough, we, we don't have this thing here. I don't, I haven't seen it. Uh, I don't see it as a problem in Sweden, really. So, uh, fortunately, we, we don't have this problem. It's It could be that I just don't know about it. But uh, I think if there was a problem here, yeah, I would have heard about it uh, and I would talk about it. But the stories that I've been covering are usually from you know New Zealand, uh, Australia, Canada, United States. Well, that's where it's the worst. I th that's what I believe. Well. Yeah, it gets a disproportionate. This is the other thing: the disproportionate amount of airtime. So it's like always. You, you'd think, you'd think, if I went out my front door here, I'm going to meet the first ten people I'm going to meet. Like six of them are going to be transvestites or some you know that that's the the way the media and and yet let's be honest it's incredibly rare yeah um and the fact now that this is just shoved on children um the, i mean there's like parents putting their 10 year 10 year olds up for gender reassignment surgery It, it, it's just criminal. <laughs> it's cr what if that child gets to like 14 and suddenly thinks, no, actually I really am a boy or want to, I want to be a boy or a girl or whatever the case. And, and, and yet they've been placed on tablets and hormone tablets or, or they've had surgery or what it's just, ah, it's insane. Yeah, it is. It's disgusting. I remember, Uh, listening to an interview with this young woman who regretted the transformation that she did when she was young. And she said one thing that st sticks to my mind. And she said uh, she was told when she, I think she was 12 years old. She heard this. She was told this, that if you are listening to a recording of yourself, you hear your voice on a recorder, you know, and you don't like your voice, this may be a sign 
that you are in that you that you should change your gen gender. Can you did you ever hear anything like this stupid? I remember when I heard my voice the first time. Oh, is this me? That sounds weird, you know. <laughs> yeah, Take some I time to get used to it. No, I don't sound like that, do I? That's not me, right? So that kind of uh, that's insanity is was what they are feeding to the kids. It's I think it's a uh, criminal. Mm. Of course, should be stopped. Yeah, and without like I keep saying without going into de too much detail, but how did Sweden react to the last 24 months because you kind of shunned a lot of the severe measures like the lockdowns and stuff. Did, was everyone still wearing, I call it wearing your underpants on your face. Yeah. Because it's that ri utterly ridiculous that you think that's, it's, this is the thing I was trying to say that I couldn't say is when you understand the nature of health, you'll, you'll understand why like, Like you'd never be doing any of that stuff, <laughs> right? Instead, you'd be eating vegetables and taking moderate exercise, having a cold shower every day if, if you know, as long as you can bear at least. It's, it's, there's much better ways, is what I'm trying to say. Much, were people like going along with it? Were people angry that Sweden wasn't doing what the rest of the world was? How, how was it? Some were, yeah. It was a big difference between the cities and, and the countryside. Uh, and I, I was talking about this the other day, actually, uh, with a friend. And where I, where I live, uh, it was very hard to find people wearing this underpants on their faces. It was hard to find them. There were very, very few. So, and still, the authorities strongly recommended people to wear them. And I was very happy to see this. People, people didn't buy it. They didn't want it. And uh, in the city, it was different. It was like, maybe, maybe it was like, uh, I don't know the numbers, but it was different. You know, I went into Stockholm at one point and I saw that there were more people there wearing this diaper. Yeah. I, I uh, yeah. I also went to see my father in Stockholm. He was taken into hospital. This was during the time when it was really tough. You know, the, the pressure from the authorities and from media was incredible. And everybody should wear the diaper you know, uh, in, in the hospital. And uh, uh, we came there to see my father and they handed me and my girlfriend, we came and they handed us the diaper and this uh, visor. You know? This is what you should wear. And I didn't put them on. And my girlfriend did. And she was wearing it for maybe 30 seconds and then she took it off because she couldn't talk. You know, we can... <laughs> yeah. And the, the nurse came back in and she saw that we weren't wearing, wearing the stuff and she didn't say anything. So I, I never wore it. I would never wear it. But I think in general, Swedes are, well, they, are, they don't want it. They don't like it. No. What's it like in England? Ah, uh, it's... It's kind of a mix. So, for example, you've still got people doing it now. Like you even still see people uh, sitting in a bus stop all on their own. Like there's nobody for, you know, well, you're, you're maybe I'm running past or something. They're just quite happy to sit there with it uh, in, in the shops now. For every, like, 50 people, there's still two or three. Still, you know, I call it believing a bogeyman. Um, back in the day, it, it, it was hard. 
my thing was like I didn't care if you if you if that's if you ascribe to that in life if you believe in you know let's be honest you told that from birth that the this is how you get sick so you can't really blame people for for going along with it all but it was the people that understood that this wasn't helpful but they still did it knowing that you're just putting that shit onto your kids yeah yeah my my, gu- my girlfriend was in uh, a hospital uh, checking something during this time and and uh, when she came to the reception she was hand this diaper and she was waiting for a while she didn't put it on and then she was called and came into this uh, doctor's office doctor's you know room and there were two doctors there nurses and she was to talk to them and she came in without the diaper and she sat down and she said i'm not wearing it and they said oh, well that's fine it's your choice and they were both wearing it wearing it and she said for on my account you don't have to wear it she said she told them and you know what they did they said oh good <laughs> and they took them off you know relieved i hear this from other people too you know, they say this is uh, this is important oh. and some people say I, I this is the hill where i will die no oh. yeah they are willing to die for this and i uh, i applaud this you know not that i want people to die but you know, th- there is a line no this is where we draw the line you you are not pushing me over that line no way i i have always been interested in people very cur- i've been a curious man basically you know, when i go to parties or when i meet people i'm i always ask them questions you know, because i get curious about them uh, i'm more like interested in others than i try to be interesting myself so i just it, it always happens i ask these questions and some people say that when i'm at a social gathering they always expect something to happen because i will ask this question that a lot of people wanted to ask but nobody dared to ask this question you see and i'm i'm the one asking it so this this is how i am as a person and and then during these these last two and a half years i noticed some a change with myself that got me worried actually and i'm i'm still concerned about it that i i lost interest in a lot of these people that i used to be interested in i just totally lost interest in them when i realized that they were just obedient citizens doing what they are told not questioning anything and i i was just looking at them and i said you know i'm not interested in this guy anymore oh. and i was it got me worried uh because i am not like that but it's it stayed with me too so it's not that i got back to being interested i just that's how it is now i'm just not interested in them and the funny thing is that i noticed is all that it was like uh, i was balancing it i was i lost interest in this part of society <laughs> and all this interest went over to all the other ones so i became much more interested in people that were not like that you know they they did question things uh, they were not obedient citizens they they didn't comply so i became very interested in them instead so it sort of shifted my whole interest focus in life so this was a major change for me uh, and i also lost a lot of friends of course uh, so called friends uh, and i totally agree with you why would i be interested in being a friend having this person as a friend 
if I can't talk to him. That was a very good point that you make. Oh, if I can't talk to you, why, you know, what's going to happen? Nothing, right? We can talk about uh, things that are safe only. Oh, that's not interesting. That's not, that's not a relationship. It's just something. It's just silly, isn't it? I thought about the friend of mine. It's a friend of my girlfriend, actually. And she's a friend of mine, too. She, told, she was telling the story uh, the other day, and uh, she had these people that she was seeing, uh, you know, female friends. She's a, she's a female. And they were seeing, they were meeting, I think, every once in, you know, every year, I think they had this thing that they were doing, right? And uh, she is, this lady, she's awake. And her friends, her old friends, they are not. And they have been uh, questioning her, and she got some problems because of this. And, and then they were about to meet again, as they do every year. I think it's every year they meet. And, and she was thinking, do I really want to meet these people now? No. We, have, we have a history, and we had some good times. But uh, do I really want to? And then she said something that I thought was quite interesting. And that was the, the last year or two years, uh, she learned uh, to trust herself more. Oh. And she paid more, less attention to what other people might think, other people might think of her. And she's sort of moving away from this idea that it's important what others might say about her. And instead, she's moving into trusting her instinct and trusting her own observations. So she's sort of finding herself in all of this. And I think that was beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, very much. I, 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 I think probably the. You remember what I was saying about the third dimension, the fourth, and the fifth. Yeah. So many people, the last couple of years, they found themselves in the fourth one, haven't they? Because they're saying, "Chris, I can't wake my family up," and I'm like, "It's not your job to. Why? Why would you even try? You know." Do you think someone could have woken you up by shaking you and going, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, you, you got to come to this in your own time. And um, yeah, but all my friends, they, you know, they, they call me conspiracy. Um, and I would, they're not really your friends there, are they? <laughs> you know, but the beauty, the beautiful thing now was Stefan is everyone met online. And then we went to a uh, big, Meetings in London, you know, you call them rallies or protests, but I don't like that. But yeah, you know, hundreds of that, uh, a hundred thousand people, all who you don't have to explain yourself. They they get it, you know. But um, they get it, and I think it was uh, yeah, it was a good time. I can imagine. Good, good, good that something so positive can come out of um this wanton destruction. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a, a few people say this and, and I agree with this. This is the, the most positive part of this whole insanity is that uh, we are finding friends and we are getting together. We are uniting and we sort of, so a, a guy told me is this, uh, no, he, he grew up with the family, of course, but he never felt really that he was, this was family. But now he found the family. Well, when he was, when he meet, is meeting all these people. At, and you can see it in, in their eyes, can't you? Uh, I can, me and my girlfriend, we were at this rally uh, some, a few weeks ago. We, and I was speaking there. And then I saw these 
people and I saw it you know, and they came over and they talked to you and th there's a connection that it's an immediate connection and you just like them you know yeah instinctively it's just yeah I like this person I'm interested I want to know more about this person and it's strong it's not like what it was like in the past you know when you met somebody who had the same idea as you in some you know whatever this is strong this stuff yeah, yeah. on that note Stefan I think that's a great all right point to close on a positive yeah it was a fantastic talking to you man Chris well fantastic. yeah what a great guy you are I think you are a fantastic guy yeah. oh that is so kind you say that but yeah. I'm really not. I'm just a product of like this wonderful life, you know. Um, <laughs> I say we're all carbon molecules, you know. So yeah, I'm a, somebody... yeah I think I think you're you're like me, you know. I I I don't handle compliments very well. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just that you know I'm only human too. And probably like a lot of what I've done, what what you might call achievements in this world, it's like I've done it for the wrong reason. You know, I went into the military for the wrong reason. Someone bet me I, I couldn't join the Marines. And I was like, fuck you, I can. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I did it to prove, you know, I stuck at it. Even when it was really, really hard, I stuck there because I couldn't let my parents see me fail because they both threw me out of home when I was a kid, you know, I was like homeless for the second time, I think at 17, first time at 15, wandering the streets in my school uniform. That was fun. Uh, you know, so I joined the military, like uh, I, I did all the substance misuse or use or whatever we're going to call it. I, I just, yeah. you know, trying to find answers and, and whatever. But so, it's very kind you say so. I, re I really appreciate it. That is really kind you say that. But it's so nice to meet you and, and to, um, you know, you came on my show as my guest and you've asked me more questions than I've asked you. And I think that's great. <laughs> kind, kind of you. But oh, It yeah. was great talking to you. I enjoyed it very, very much. So uh, thank yes. you very much for for doing the work no problem and if you want to have another chat again and um you know you put this video on your channel i'll put it on mine or whatever whatever works that's that would be really kind yeah of course i will post this on on my channel of course yes i know i know my viewers will like this yes we'll give my massive love to sweden um i i, I I've just had such a great time all over Scandinavia, but particularly um, in in Sweden. So anyway, it was uh, great talking to you. Yes, I would I would love to do it anytime again soon. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a great time. That you are doing well. That you that you get your the appreciation that you deserve, and that we are that, that we will do well. You know. All of us. Yes, we will. We're getting there. We're all yeah. we're on an, on an incredible journey, and it's going in the right direction for each and every one of us, even when it doesn't seem like it is. <laughs> That's right. Brilliant. Let me right. just uh, stop this recording. I'll say to my audience, massive love to you all. If you can like and subscribe, that would be great. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this chat as much as I have, and uh, we'll see you next time.